Yuri. 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 I remember when Violet Evergarden's first trailer came out. There was nothing but hype from a community that could witness firsthand a big step for animation. There is nothing in that trailer but the promise of something great, with a recurring theme in the comments that anime once again was saved. What does that even mean? When the show itself finally came out, the community's response was an overwhelming shrug. Despite the fact that the animation absolutely lived up to what it was promising, it's the story where Violet Evergarden lost its audience. The show itself is clearly aiming for consistent emotional responses from the audience, but lackluster characters and clumsily handled melodrama led to the impact consistently falling short of what it was obviously aiming to achieve. I desperately wanted to like the show more than I actually did, but even despite how underwhelming I found the show to be, it promised a bright future for Kyoto Animation, and it reignited the fiery passion I once had for them. That was a poor choice of words. This movie, while it doesn't necessarily fix any of the issues I had with the storytelling of the show, certainly improved those faults. The inconsistencies felt more like hilly meadows than vast mountain ranges. The movie really is a film of two halves, with each portion focusing on one member of a pair of separated sister. The first half takes place in an all-girls boarding school, meaning that if you have any understanding of the wholesome hand-holding of Shoujo Ai, you should probably be prepared for the consistent lesbian undertones that took place. This half, while by no means bad, was definitely the weaker of the two segments, cause this girl is angsty in all the ways that made the show feel underwhelming. One of the first interactions she has with Violet is to scream, don't touch me, for really no discernible reason, which felt like nothing other than forced tension. But pretty much immediately afterwards, she is fleshed out into an actual character, who, while not particularly amazing, got the job done. The only other groan-worthy moment was after Violet left and this other girl starts being friends with her, and while I don't want to give away too much, she just happened to say the exact words that the main girl wanted to hear, completely unprompted, which I just found to be pretty cringy. The second half is where the film really shines, with one of the few actually likeable kid characters in anime. She's not particularly deep or anything, but the film wanted her to be a cute kid, and she was a cute kid. What can I say, that time where she got the lollipop was actually funny. It's the relationship she has with the postman here that really blew me away though. It's a fairly typical no-nonsense guy who unwillingly becomes endeared to a cute kid dynamic, but I don't know, they have actual chemistry with one another, despite how much I hate this trope. It made the girl cute, the segment charming, and provided the climax with some actual emotional weight. 8 out of 10. This video is the 24th in a series of daily uploads where I review some movies I missed over the last decade in the hopes of making the ultimate anime of the decade list. If you have any suggestions for any anime, film or TV, released from 2011 to 2020, please tell me in the comments. I want to find out about it now as opposed to after I make the big ass video. Also, I'm going to say some cringy setout shit. And tomorrow's film is Sound and Fury if you want to watch it in advance. See you then.